Well, it's the first time that bug has seen light a day in the yeah. in 320 million years. Yeah. Should give it to a paleontologist. Yeah. That's what good geologists do, don't they? Give it to an expert. Give it to an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend at school who said, let's go rock climbing. So I went rock climbing and discovered I wasn't very good at it, but I was really quite interested in the rocks as I was trying to climb up them. I guess I was about 12 or 13 years old at the time, and uh, that, was, that was it. I was, uh, I was hooked. That's what really got my interest was like, the fact that I could go out rock climbing and have fun all day, but at the same time I, I could, you know, look through these rocks and understand different processes and spin a story to my climbing buddies about what was actually going on. The science that we're doing at the moment, and certainly the geology, the exploration, is pushing the knowledge of UK Carboniferous geology, you know, further than it, it's ever been before. That's something that I never thought I'd be doing when I was, you know, first studied geology at the age of 13, 14, that I'd actually be drilling wells here in the UK. It's really cool to be able to go to the Lancaster Fells and Yorkshire Dales and, uh, and be able to, to see in three dimensions and that surface what we can only see uh, in a, in a small, small borehole section. The rocks in the Quarilla Licence area are the, the same rocks, are much deeper, so in order to see them we've got to drill to depths of in excess of 5,000 feet. This whole area was covered by a thick ice sheet, the Irish Sea ice. A lot of the ice caps were melting very quickly and that water was flowing with tremendous force over the cliff at, at Malham and it really would have looked almost identical to what you see at um, Niagara Falls. Great place to come rock climbing now. Yeah. So. Well, lucky for you, a pothole captured the river. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it keeps the cliffs all nice and dry no, now, yeah. so you can, like well, those guys up there at the moment. As dry can... as it can be in Yorkshire, yeah. I guess. The key basic tenant of geoscience is that the present is the key to the past, and by looking at these rocks, we can interpret how the rocks were deposited, how they formed, and what their structural history was. So we're on the road between Malham and Settle, right on the northern edge of the Craven Basin, and we're looking at the Upper Boland Shale Formation. If we stood here 15,000 years ago, we'd have had ice all the way above our heads, going all the way down to, I guess, the M4, somewhere between uh, Bristol and London, yeah, we'd have been buried in ice. Yeah, somewhere in the, uh, somewhere in the Midlands, or uh, down, in the, down in your neck of the woods, yeah, near uh, Worcestershire, right. or yeah, something like, like that, that, which about, that was about the southern limit of it, I think. Yeah, the, the ice was pretty thick here, right? I mean, it we're talking, been, what, yeah. hundreds of metres? I, I mean, no really, idea, no idea really. but it must, must have been, judging from the amount of... Um, you know, deposits that have been... Made. These humps that we're seeing in these sort of hillocks in front of us are what we refer to as a, a roche mutone, and it's where the ice has been flowing over the bedrock, and it's smoothed away the, the, the one side, and as it's moved over, it's plucked the rock in front of us. So it's just a sort of geomorphological visual that helps us understand. From shale gas perspective, it's not particularly interesting, but I think geologists just get excited about anything that they can explain. That's good stuff, isn't it? I mean, that's just... A bit clay rich, but definitely dark and full quite, of organic material. Quite organic rich, look, yeah. quite black, really soft and quite quite clay rich. You can do the chewing test if you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that's so special about the, the Boland Shale that we see here in Lancashire is that it's over a mile thick. That's sort of unique for anywhere, you know, definitely in the UK or certainly in Europe. If you look at any of the American shales, they're a couple of hundred feet thick. And that's, that's you know, a big resource in a small amount of area. We collect physical cores of rock, and each one of those cores we can put in a container and measure the amount of gas that comes out. In that way, we have a physical measurement of the amount of gas under the ground in Lancashire. But the rocks that we, we, we've been looking around at uh, in the, in the Boland Fowls are incredibly naturally fractured. They've been under this process of orogeny, so they've been under a mountain building, and that fractures the rock up under the ground and and this is what um, makes the, the the shale so interesting is because the fractures are what allow the gas to flow the challenge going forward for for the engineers and the geologists is to try and work out from one of these resource pads this football size pitch is how many wells can we actually drill from it and how much gas can we maximize getting out and that way we're going to have you know a, a lower environmental footprint but a huge resource available to us it's an old worm burrow where the worms burrow down into the ground and then it, it's fossilised back up. The worm is happily living in the sand. And he's burrowed so his way so down. A little burrow. And he's gone sideways a bit. And he's gone sideways a bit. It's so probably a U-shaped burrow, actually, that would come up. Come back up again. Comes here. up there, look. And, uh, yeah. This is a really good example of how processes that go on nowadays 
can give you a clue to the environments that the, the rocks were deposited in. So what we saw on the fossil beach were the, the ripples, the same as you can go and see on any beach. It's fossilised in, in time. It's like time has uh, completely stopped for that piece of rock. The ripples are really, really obvious there. And they're so well preserved for what is a, yeah. you know, a really ancient beach. It's, it's incredible. So when we see some uh, sandstone beds in the, in the Sabden, this is, this is what this kind of what we would see. Yeah, we must add a sharp, uh, sharp sea level rise in a short yeah. amount of time, yeah. right? Yeah, you can imagine the beach has just been drowned, hasn't it? Is that a shower or is that like a mud-filled trough? It's not really a trough, I guess they don't line up. I mean, that one is that one there. And that thing is... That's really interesting, eh? Yeah. The fantastic thing about that is that it's... You, you can stand on this rock surface which is about 320 million years old, and just imagine that you were on a modern day beach. Here's the ripples. Those are nice. Look at that, perfect. Here we got the worm burrows here as well. Have you? The bioturbidation? Yeah. These U shaped burrows, exactly the same as on the 320 million year old beach, is what we see on the modern beach. Just the way the, the ripples are the same uh, wavelength. The same, same si frequency, very similar same wavelength. Same amplitude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so weirdly similar. The application of science is important in the day-to-day -day operations of, of Quadrilla. It just illustrates the importance of doing basic geological science in the surface to give us information about how our rocks are likely to be in the subsurface. Straight towards the rocks, you. Oh, towards the rocks. There's nice fractures in these, actually. Some really good fractures in them. Yeah, he's that's, going that's exactly he's... it, isn't it? Yeah. That's exactly what we saw, that, that feature. No, exactly, right? yeah. There's probably a boulder on top of it. There could easily have been, you know. Yeah, he's turning south now, isn't he? He's probably going to... Um, the fields are a bit further south, yeah, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's what I thought. Morecambe Bay, they're right out there.